Hey guys, how's it going? My name is Dr. Pappas. I'm the chair of the Department of Biology here at Manhattanville College, and I'm giving you a little primer lecture on what happened with plague in the Middle Ages. So as a quick background, what is plague? It's not an umbrella term. It actually refers to a certain bacteria called Yersinia pestis. This is a picture of Yersinia pestis over here. You can see it's what we call a gram-positive rod. So it's got this rod-like shape. It's pink in color. This is good for us because it's when it's gram-positive, it can be easily treated with antibiotics. So for example, we can use doxycycline, the same antibiotic we use to treat Lyme disease. It also works against plague. Now, this looks pretty small, but in fact, when we think about coronavirus, which is going on right now, SARS-CoV-2, which is the name of that virus, it's much smaller. This is the picture of a bacteria. We can see all these viruses that easily fit inside them. Coronaviridae are similar to size of herpes virus, or about half the size of this virus right here. So they're pretty small overall. Now, obviously, when we look at this, we can talk about some parallels happening between coronavirus nowadays, or COVID-19, and what happened in the Middle Ages with the plague. So one of the things is, you know, coronavirus nowadays is untreatable, this, this COVID-19. Obviously, in the Middle Ages, there were no antibiotics, so uh, Yersinia pestis was not treatable at that time either. At the time in the Middle Ages, they didn't have all the information they needed about what was causing the plague. They had no idea what bacteria were at the time. They didn't realize how human-to-human -human transmission was occurring. So similar to nowadays with SARS-CoV-2, we're still learning. The good news is we're learning much faster because we use the scientific method. We've got lots of different technology and techniques they didn't have at the time. So we're gaining our information and our curve much quicker. And obviously, because of the, they didn't have information at the time, how did they resolve the plague in the Middle Ages? Through quarantine, the same as we're doing right now. We're doing quarantine so we can get a leg up on the information, the science, get our hospitals ready, etc. So therefore, when we're ready to get back out there, we're going to do a good job. Now, I should let you know there's three different types of plague as they exist. Uh, the first is called bubonic plague. We can see a picture of this on the left-hand side here. So we're going to start with this idea. So how does plague spread to humans? It spreads through a flea bite. So a flea that's infected with this bacteria or contaminated with this bacteria bites a human. That bacteria gets inside the human and then basically because of the immune system, we get an immune infiltrate which makes its way to a lymph node. So we call that a bubos. It's very sore and tender to the touch. If you palpate it, you can see that it sort of bulges out. This is a classic defining characteristic of plague. Okay, so we can see this is how it first starts. It's always by a flea bite. But if it doesn't go treated, for example, if this happened, for example, in the Middle Ages, not nowadays, it could move into different types of plague. One of the things it could become is septicemic. Septicemic, you might have heard the word septic shock sometimes in these different uh, doctor TV shows. So septic shock means bacteria has now gotten into the blood supply. It's causing damage to different parts of the body. We can see that with a patient's leg right here. Uh, on the foot, you can see these black spots. That's necrotizing tissue. That's tissue dying because of the overall infection. Again, septicemic plague can spread from bubonic plague to here or directly through a flea bite or handling an infected animal. Now the last phase is going to be called pneumonic plague, and this is the one that actually impacted a lot of people in the Middle Ages. Pneumonic plague is a pneumonia. This is when the plague, the bacteria, has actually made its way now into the lungs. We can see here, uh, usually the lungs, you can see right through them, they look black. Here there's lots of infiltrates in the lungs. This is pneumonia. This is exactly what it looks like. And so what happens in this case, the bacteria is now in the lungs, and if somebody coughs, <coughs> It can spread or even just through respiratory droplets to other people around them. So these two are spread by coming into contact with animals and fleas. But pneumonic plague is different in that by expelling these respiratory droplets that have bacteria on it, it can spread from person to person. If that sounds familiar, it's very similar to what's happening nowadays with SARS-CoV-2 or COVID-19. It's being spread by respiratory droplets, but in this case, instead of it being this bacteria, it's the virus, all right, uh, SARS-CoV-2, which is spreading, which is a coronavirus. Now, how does this all happen with plague? How did it spread from person to person? Well, the first thing is to keep in mind is plague is still around today. It never went away. We have plague cases every year in the United States. Typically, what happens with plague is it's inside of prairie dogs or small, small rodents in the southeastern United States. A flea bites an animal that's got it. The flea gets it. They spread it to another animal, and that's it. But what happens sometimes is it spreads to humans. It can spread to humans through different ways. For example, it can bite a cat. The cat can, in fact, then get pneumonic plague. It begins coughing around a human, and through those respiratory droplets, get a human sick. So this is sort of a zoonotic infection, or an epizoonotic infection, which we usually call it, because they spread it to the, to the human. Uh, a dog could get a flea on them, and then you sleep with the dog, or you're around the dog, petting, you know, Rover, you're having a good time. Flea jumps onto you, flea bites you, plague. And in this case, it would be bubonic plague or septicemic plague first. Luckily, because of the United States being a developed nation, uh, you're going to get medical treatment, you're going to get antibiotics, and the survival rate is pretty good. Now, how did it get here originally from Asia if we're thinking about the Middle Ages, and again, we're talking about plague? Well, we think plague spread to humans through marmots. A marmot is like a small groundhog. 
And so basically through the trade routes, because again, the same as coronavirus nowadays, everything is happening because people are moving things. So in this case, just the trade routes, they make their way to Europe, they make their way to the, uh, to the uh, Mediterranean Sea. And if we zoom in right here on the Mediterranean Sea, follow these Genoese routes, see these dark red patterns here. You can see they start off in Genoa in Northern Italy, but they're gonna go around Corsica, they're gonna go to Marseille, where that is nowadays in France, they're gonna go down here to the boot of Italy. And let's look at where plague actually started. Plague started in these brown areas. Oh, right there in Marseille, down in Corsica to these to the bottom of the boot, exactly where the Genoese trade routes are. Now the same thing as coronavirus, you know, where it started in Asia and slowly spread out, made its way to a certain region, in this case, just by chance, also to Italy and Europe, and then made their way to the Europe. Things take time. For plague, it took years. For a coronavirus, it took a few months. Now, the last thing we're going to talk about is the death rate and seasonal occurrence of plague. So the first thing to keep in mind is, you know, when we think about uh, SARS-CoV-2 and COVID-19, what's the mortality rate? We don't know yet. We think it's around 1%. It could be 2%. It could be higher than that. It could be lower than that. We just don't have enough information yet to tell you what it is. But here's what we do know about plague. So again, thinking about this bacteria. Before antibiotics were made, so this is up till 1941, the mortality rate was 66%. So two out of three people would die. That's pretty high. Now with antibiotics nowadays, because people still get plagued today, uh, mortality rate has been reduced to about 11%. WHO takes it a little bit lower, says eight to 10% of people. So that's one out of 10. But in endemic areas, for example, developing nations, the mortality rate could be much higher because again, if they can't get antibiotics, it could be, it could be very bad. Um, it's seasonal occurrence. It usually occurs in the United States in late spring to early fall. It just happens to be when animals are moving around, the fleas are looking for food, all these different things play into, into, into it, even rainfall matters. So here's the thing that you might be thinking to yourself, hold on a second, you're telling me plague is still around today and it still has a mortality rate of around 10%. Why isn't this such a big deal? Why isn't the news reporting on it? Why don't we hear about it all the time? Because this is a big thing. Well, here's why. Plague came to the United States around 1900. Okay, so it's only been here for about 120 years. Again, by trading and people coming in, it got here. Um, every year though, recently, there aren't that many cases of it. So if we go from 1900 till today, 2020, there's only been about a thousand cases of plague in the United States. So overall incidence rate is low. And then if we just look at the number of cases from 2000 to 2018, every year there's only about six, 10, 18 cases. We do see mortality rate, people die once the, once the incidence rate goes up. Since about 10% of people die, unfortunately, we see people die as well. So when there's 16 people that get sick, you know, about 10% of them die in that category. In this case, a little bit less, around 8%. So um, why isn't this such a big deal? Why don't we hear about it in the news? Well, first of all, it doesn't occur that often compared to other diseases. There's lots of diseases that occur in this country that we don't report on. Uh, but even more so, we're used to it. Plague has been around since the Middle Ages. So since it's still been here, it's been around, it's always going to be here, we're never going to get rid of it. It's just not something we think about, it's just something we go and treat and we move on. We can anticipate the same thing is going to happen with COVID-19. COVID-19 is worldwide, it's a pandemic, uh, but even more so, even when we make a vaccine, we're not going to be able to easily eradicate it and get that vaccine to everybody. So it's going to be around for a while, and unfortunately, it's probably going to become a new normal. It's going to be a very, very serious cold. It has a high fatality rate. Even 1% is considered very, very high when you start working out the numbers. Um, and so, But it's going to be something that becomes a little bit more something we get used to seeing around. So in any case, there you guys go. I hope this was very interesting and informative. I hope it uh, helps with what you guys are going to be talking about this week in your lecture group. And I hope you all are doing very well.